I'm going to try to share my story on three points of trajectory of my life, but I'll try to remove at times myself from that trajectory and see how I belong to a community, to a society that has been going through a similar trajectory. But let me put a, all this into a context of what I call a 3R today, which is refugees, refuge, and reborn, which is the theme of this year's TEDx. So I think we can always disagree about many things, civil society, private sector, and the government, but we're almost at the point of reaching one point of a consensus. The world is in a big mess. We are living through a time where there is a bigger number of refugees in human life that is known, even bigger than during the World War II. There is a massive discrepancies between countries and within the countries. So de so-called developed countries are facing a division in a society, in their societies, that 2% of population hold almost 95% of the capital. A shrinking, disappearing middle class and the rest living in the verge of survival. Developing countries, such as this one, a new state of Kosovo, is, are pretty much at the same level of facing semi-democratic, semi-autocratic, and semi-dictatorship. That, again, the tendency is to have a very thin layer of society that is very rich, suppressed middle class that is somewhat given a right to vote, but never to be participants of the democratic process. And then uh, the rest is poor with the tendency of trying to leave the country and become refugees. And then we have underdeveloped countries, or failed state, as I call them, which are a ticking bomb, as we see, constantly producing conflict and wars with the major, major repercussions for civilians and ordinary citizens. So, how does this fit in the story of three R's? What happened in this part of the world, in the Balkans and former Yugoslavia, it was completely opposite of what happened in the Central Europe. Berlin Wall fell down. Most of the Central European countries used all that energy to move forward with the vision of transforming the society from revolutions that were colored in the street to revolutions in their mind of moving forward, building society that is based on system of values, keeping and protecting the dignity of the people, and then joining European Union. In the Balkans, that energy got oriented to destruction, subordination, war, and grab for power and control, which led to many killings and millions of refugees. One of them, it was me too. I left among many dilemmas and very limited choices I did make the decision to become a refugee in Macedonia. And that decision of refugee, becoming a refugee was a big one and a huge change because I did leave behind my home, my friends, my family, which we had been divided at the very first day of NATO bombing, in order to survive. And I want to give you a little bit of a context of this separation because I think it's critically important when I hear Syrian stories today being divided for, for political reasons. I'm a son of a, a young then man who 
1968, before I was born, was an organizer of demonstrations in 1968 demanding freedom, demanding equal rights for Albanians, and demanding right for education. Since then, too, the day where we separated with my father and my son, then eight months old in 1999, he was a person of being persecuted, discriminated against by the state at all levels because he was labeled as anti-communist, separatist, and somebody who works against the interest of the state. That label was not only his. There were many of his friends and people that you know that stood for the same values. A lot of them were killed the very same night of a NATO bombing, like Agim Hayrizi, with his mother and his son in his flat. So we decided to separate so at least one of the male in the family would survive. I ended up in Skopje. From a refugee, I found a place which was called a refuge place for me. And I want your attention to think how close they are. Refugee is a notion of somebody who leaves the place and goes somewhere else because it's forced from conflict, terror, and use of violent means in order to displace you from the, your place. While refuge is a place where you find confidence you find yourself back. And I could not include in this speech the great heart and great solidarity that the Albanians in Macedonia gave us, the refugees from Kosovo, including myself. It was amazing. I felt like home. My adopted new family was my family. There was nothing that was different in a sense and sometimes even more, because the question was, where did they get that power to adopt me as their son, to give me everything, and even live through my pain with me for not being able to see my family? The day of coming back to the home that I left arrived. And this is the re rebirth, the renaissance of me and my society. Very excited, as you can imagine. The very first day, I met one of my friends who went to fight for KLA instead. His question was, who liberated Kosovo? The peaceful resistance of your father and his friends, or the soldiers of KLA? The tone was pretty high. I said to him, if this is the question, then I don't think Kosovo is free. And I moved on. I hoped that I was wrong. But unfortunately, I wasn't wrong. On behalf of the people that went to fight, on behalf of the people who died and sacrificed, on behalf of the people who gave everything, on the other side, quickly there was a mobilization of a similarity in all the senses of grabbing power, of dividing people, of keeping the society apart. There were even murders after the war. People, professionals who tried to defend the urban planning of the cities in Kosovo, people and politicians who tried to defend the system of values, of good neighboring and relationships that advanced the education and other services, those people were eliminated in order to weaken the political opposition and only for few to grab the power and keep the power. So here is where my third R, rebirth and renaissance, comes into play fully. I see myself as part of a network that needs to reinvent itself and give birth to itself over and over again in order to be able to face those challenges that this society, but not only, a lot of developing societies and countries, a lot of underdeveloped societies and countries are facing. Corruption, criminality, concentration of capital, making it a norm to be thief, making it a, an accepted norm to be 
betraying the societal values. I think those challenges are challenges of 2015 and this century, but it takes a community like you and many others outside this place to stand united, to give birth to ourselves and others who do believe that life is not about being submissive, life is not about being diplomatically correct when it's not necessary, and sometimes even when it's necessary, we need to stand up and fight for our values. I do not want to brag about myself. I know I could share more, but I have to say, I spent three years in Afghanistan and I did stand by the people who were pushed away by the forces and the warlords, at times by international community in order to keep stability, without ever thinking that stability can actually become the threat to stability itself. So we need individuals, we need communities, we need civil society, we need smart business people, and we need decent, honest, and sincere politicians to be able to maintain the system of values to protect ourselves from the bad, because we did go through it once in a major way. We were the refugees of the world. We were the people who found refuge in the world. And now it's in our duty to show how we can survive and give rebirth to great values in society. Thank you.